to things like sleep um, and, you know, kind of keeping a, a stable schedule, not too much stimulation, not too little stimulation is central to all of these treatments and quite central to stability um, in bipolar disorder. So no question. And that is actually a primary focus of one of the evidence-based treatments, which is called interpersonal social rhythm therapy, which is focused on um, helping people really stabilize their daily schedules when you sleep, when you eat, when you interact with other people and how much you do of each of those things and recognizing that there are so many stressful things that can occur, both good things and bad things can cause mm -hmm. stress in our lives that can throw all of that off kilter. Um, so for example, having a baby, having a wedding, um, you know, um, the start of the school year again, um, you know, going on vacation, all of these things can kind of destabilize our schedules, which we know in turn can destabilize mood, particularly in people with a vulnerability to bipolar disorder. So that's a major focus of IPSRT or interpersonal and social rhythm therapy and thinking about also how our relationships can contribute to destabilizing mood and daily rhythms. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy, which focuses on the interaction between the way we think, the way we feel, and the way that we behave or act, um, also has tons of data um, in individuals with bipolar disorder. Um, increasingly, there's more data for dialectical behavior therapy, both in terms of helping to stabilize mood, but also interestingly in helping to decrease suicide risk mm -hmm. in people with bipolar disorder. Um, so I would say those are three kind of central. Another one that's really critical to focus on is um, family focus therapy is, um, and one of the reasons I think it's so important to mention that is that, you know, it, it's so helpful to not only be working with the person who's diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but also be helping everyone around them one, to understand what it is that the person with bipolar disorder is living with, how they can help support that individual, how they can communicate more effectively. And sometimes it's other people who notice even before we do that we're starting to have symptoms. I mean, one of the symptoms of mania is not realizing that your behavior is out of the ordinary. And so helping people around you to better help you um, and to have a common language for talking about it. And the other thing that I think it goes without saying is we know that bipolar disorder is a very highly genetic illness. It's not entirely genetic, but it's highly heritable. And so it's not uncommon, particularly in our work with kids and adolescents, we bring in the whole family to teach them about bipolar disorder and teach them these same skills because many of them have parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings who may have bipolar disorder, may have other mood problems as well. And the more we can help the whole system to manage their own mood difficulties, the better off everyone is. And so um, family-focused therapy is a good example of a family-based treatment to help improve communication and, um, and education about bipolar disorder. And you know, many of these treatments, we, there's evidence for both in adults and in um, adolescents, particularly.